lot of paper. <laughs> Crazy, and I apologize. It's my third night meeting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a nameplate now. But yeah, it, it really thinks it's cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Has, like has she been changed to Debbie Lund? No, I think we're right. Um, I don't think so. This is the planning oh. <laughs> it's heavy. It's Oh, controversial matter. Last night. Oh, yeah, okay. It worked. It's over there. All right. Oh, it's over there. I was listening in on the phone. Up to the floor. I'm going to probably be okay. What? Remember that, it's that room being so hot last time I was going to pass us away. <laughs> Swing at the podium. Yeah, that was a hot when I was in yeah, the front house the yeah, before the meeting, meeting and it was like 100, it was over 100 yeah. degrees. We could just all swap soaps. So it's in a packet. I could be Glenn. Yeah. You could be you. Okay. Yeah. You could do that. I don't want to be Leo. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that for April Fool's really? Day sometime. Not that, that would be fun, fun to be it's Leo. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is no. the plate's not in it? <laughs> so, you have a secret admirer. You want to so borrow mine? Uh, oh, no. good. We already offered her another. I know who I am. <laughs> Most of the time. We could all turn ours around and be in solidarity with it. There we oh, go. Thank you. <laughs> I did. Yes. Staff ready? No, we noticed it last week. We're we good. Council ready? Yes. Ready. Good. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 1,784th meeting of the Malala City Council. Please join me in the flake salute. Thank you, Gerald. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will go through and do roll call. Start over here. Councilor Palumbo present. Councilor Swigert present. Councilor Borth here. Councilor Childers present. Councilor Klein present. Mayor Thompson here. City Manager Dan Huff present. Finance Director Shawnee Seifert present. Public Works Director Gerald Fisher present. Community yeah. Planner Alda Rodriguez present. Uh, consultant Stacy Goldstein present. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item up is public comment. I have. One turned in. Jim Taylor, you want to come up to the mic? We need your name and address for the record, please. Jim Taylor, 2940 South Holt Road, Colton, Oregon, and property owner in Wallowa. Uh, some issues uh, have come up 
to my attention from other people in the city of Mlala also. So I guess I have a question for you, Jimmy, is um, if a person does not have city sewer and water, can you send them a bill? If you're not connected to city sewer and water, can you send, can the city send them a bill? For, for, for sewer and water. For storm. For storm? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll have to defer to the city manager because it, that's an administrative Okay. So. <laughs> Dan, if, if well, same question. This is probably a question you could ask me during the day. Okay. But, what my question is, is that now since, now there's uh, storm drain fees being charged to the city sewer and water bill. Uh, some of the properties that, and some of the people I've talked to have, uh, that are not hooked to any storm drains whatsoever are being charged storm drain fees. So I'm wondering if the city cannot provide storm drains and the storm drain running off of their property never ends up in a storm drain facility to the sewer plant, can they still charge storm drain fees? Well, your storm drainage system should not run into our wastewater treatment plant. So if that is the case, we'd ask you to separate those. But if you provide the public works director information on your actual property, we can actually make that determination. Um, we don't have uh, the ability to access our, our utility information on where the water goes from a piece of property from, that has impervious surface and drains to in this direction or that direction. Mm -hmm. We could tell you that. Um, if you have impervious surface and you drain onto a public street, a ditch that the city's responsible for, um, we, can, we can figure that out. We also can tell you if you have a piece of property in order to drive from point A to point B, you drive on other city facilities that do have storm drainage facilities on them. So if I get this clear then, even though you do not have some of these properties uh, that I'm talking about other people, not just myself, um, if you're not hooked to the storm drain whatsoever because you drive on the city streets that you are... I didn't say it that way exactly. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> telling me I said What I said was if you come to the office and work with the public works director, he could pull that property up and take a look at where the water goes. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And so that's what I'll transfer that on to the other people that have approached me about it. They'll go through, we'll come see Gerald and Gerald and uh, work that out. Yes. Okay. That's what I end up hearing. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other comment cards turned in, but did anybody else want to speak for public comment tonight? We've got a lot more people here than normal, so. All right. Uh, next item. We have an introduction. Gerald, yep. do you want to go ahead and? Uh, Andy? Oh, did somebody want to? I think we had another public comment. Please, come on out to the mic. We need your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Angela Glossley, currently residing in Kelso, but for the 212 Shaver in Malala here. Um, we purchased the land and property approximately 10 years ago on this October 31st and just came into notifying or getting notified that the zoning had changed when we purchased it. So now as of the zoning that it is right now, which I believe you guys are going to be speaking and possibly voting on tonight, um, with the residential house on it, if anything were to happen to that house, we could not repair it or replace it unless we put it in something commercial, which Unfortunately, we still have mortgages on this, and that leaves us with a mortgage that would be way more than just the property alone, and not being able to build a, a commercial property on it right now. Um, I guess I'm just asking to consider this for other housing that is also in, with along that same zoning area, and what what would be putting them in the same position of not being able to sell or not being able to rebuild with this because mortgages won't take it because of this issue that we've just now recently found. <laughs> but. 
So the the zoning has already changed. I, it was changed some time ago for that particular when parcel. When we first purchased it, it was told told to us that it was a light commercial grandfathered in residential. Um, but since then, and we were able to get a loan on it, no problem back then. But since then, zoning has changed, and we're not able to get any oh. other loans on it because they won't cover it. <coughs> um, we have been told that if the house, something were to happen to it, we couldn't rebuild a house in that same position. Um, it would have to be more commercial or sell it as a commercial lot. So. Okay. Could I speak to that? Certainly. Um, the house I grew up in, and I've been here my entire life, it was, the zoning was changed then too, and it was the same way. Um, if dad's house burnt down, he was out of luck. He did sell it to a commercial, uh, in fact, it's the um, storage units on 211. That's the property I grew up on, and he sold it to them. Otherwise, if anything would have happened in that house, it would have been done back then. Mm -hmm. So, just a point of clarification: we're we're not considering any sort of zoning changes tonight. Uh, this this code, with regard to that aspect, uh, nothing that we're considering has anything to. Uh, that's that's in our current code. Um, so, I, if it if it was zoned when you originally purchased it, commercial, uh, light commercial. Light industrial. Light industrial, and there was there was a resi a residential. I think grandfather <coughs> asks while that property is there, if something happens to it, then the, the situation would have been the same. So I I don't know that anything's changed over over that time frame, but I, nothing that we're considering tonight would would make any sort of change to to that process. Okay, because we had talked to the city planners and they were saying that it was in. A possible voting and that we would know by tomorrow if we talk talk to them so, so in our current code for non-conforming uses there is a section with we, okay. we really we really yeah, shouldn't be true. making decisions on this tonight okay. <laughs> we, she's talking yeah. about something that's on the agenda so we probably should have her talk about it during the agenda during public comment because mm -hmm. it's not during to talk about that so okay so you want to include it in the, the record yes yeah. okay yeah. all right so I'm being I'm being asked to have you come back up to the mic during the we're gonna have a public hearing on the code so okay all right thank you thank you Just a little bit. <laughs> all right um, you have an introduction for us yeah Andy up to the podium um, like to introduce Andy Peters who are, is our new operations supervisor um, the operations supervisor position um, is new to the city well no it, it, we did have one before but it's been recreated um, the operations supervisor is responsible for the maintenance division and oversees the water and wastewater treatment facilities and does a lot of the day-to-day -day operation assisting me with um, capital projects and getting the city business done so um, Andy came in tonight to say hello and introduce himself and so. yeah um, I live uh, in Big Meadows 1028 Meadow Arc place um, and before that I lived on Hart Street and before that I was at the intersection of Tolliver and Maine so uh, lived in Malala five plus years and uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to come work for the city so thank you welcome welcome, welcome. welcome. Uh, Andy. So all the phone calls that would normally come to me are now going to go to Andy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so if we make a special request for Gerald, can we still keep his plate full? Yes. Okay. Right. That's going to happen no matter what. <laughs> uh, next item on the agenda, we have some planning uh, commission applications that we've received. Uh, there are a total of four applicants. What I'd like to do is have each of the applicants come up, introduce themselves, tell us a little about yourselves, and then uh, well, after everybody's had an opportunity to in introduce themselves, we'll have a conversation about it after. After Does that sound all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one that I have, Jennifer Satter. 
Need your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Jennifer Satter, 1115 North Malala Avenue. There's lots of ones. Um, former city councilor, I'm currently on the school board. Uh, I've lived in Malala for 13 years. Anybody have any questions for Ms. Satter? That's a lot of volunteer time. Are you sure you're up for that? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'd gotten myself down to one committee, the warming center, and now I'm on like five committees again. So. <laughs> I, I'll confess. I was on city council, so I am a glutton <laughs> for punishment. So. Yeah. I, I'll confess I actually it. reached out to Ms. Satter and asked her to apply. Um, I've heard some speculation that the city and the school board don't cooperate and don't know what each other are doing, don't work together. Uh, this presents us with a unique opportunity to have a member of the school board on our planning commission. So, so I wasn't going to publicly say it, but yeah, Jimmy suckered me into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you chose to go ahead and apply. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, Andy McBride. I'm Andy McBride. My address is 34885 South Odin Road. I've uh, lived in Malala for about 15 years now. I have a general contracting business here in town and I run a nonprofit called Fix It Forward, also here in town. And I just like to do what I can to offer up some service. Uh, I deal a lot with municipals, um, planning committees, divisions, um, stuff like that through the permit process and applications in my construction business. Anybody have any questions for Mr. McBride? All right, thank you. Douglas Eagle Bear. Good evening. Um, Douglas Eagle Bear. I live at 725 West Heint Street here in Malola. Um, I put an application out of the fact that I thought that I'd be able to hopefully do some good. I'm a recent architectural graduate, a uh, little bit of background there. Got 20 years in construction related various fields as an electrician. Um, worked on various projects through uh, school, some civil, some commercial, uh, things like that. Um, and uh, yeah, just looking to serve the community in which I live and hopefully make some kind of impact or help in the growth that the city is experiencing right now. I also currently um, and participating in the visioning uh, that's going on. And I'm also volunteering with a, a nonprofit, Architects Without Borders, which does a lot of work around the country. Um, so I've been helping with a le recent project with them, redevelopment of a school <coughs> park. Um, so using my skills in various ways. But it came up, it was approached to uh, put an application, so I thought I'd give it a shot. Council, have any questions for me? <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hardeep Brar. I didn't think that I saw. So. All right. Uh, Hardeep, he owns Fred's <coughs> Market in Blackman's Corner, oh, the, okay. the market there. Mm -hmm. um, I know he's really interested in it. I, I had to relay the message through one of his employees that he needed to be here, so I but he's not here. So now, Fred's or? Uh, Fred's. Foodomart? Fred's Foodomart. Yes, Fred's okay. Foodomart and then the Blackman's. Oh, really? Corner. Wow. Yeah, he owns both. Wow, some high qualifications here. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Great. All right, so um, we have four applicants for three seats. One of the applicants isn't here. I think we've more or less agreed that you know we want to have them come to a meeting, talk to us beforehand. So I, I think at this point in time, it makes sense for us to not consider Hardeep for the appointment, which leaves us with three. But 
but certainly open for discussion. I think we have three qualified, three yeah. qualified applicants, yeah. and I just thank you for stepping forward. And Mr. Eagle Bear, it's good to see you. You are part of Visioning. We recognize that name. Thank you. I, I just wanted to comment wow. that um, anybody from a trade is extremely helpful in yes. um, in the planning commission. So thank thank you folks that um, have that skill. And um, Jennifer, I know that you're very involved. So hopefully you'll have the time. Any other discussion? If council's interested, I'd need a motion <coughs> to approve the mayor's appointment of the applicants. So be it. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None? All right, so that would be Jennifer Satter, Andy McBride, and Douglas Eagle Bear. Welcome to the Planning Commission. Yes. The Planning Commission meets the first Wednesday of the month at 630 in this room. Just so that you guys know, I'm sure you'll get lots more information. Um, just to give you an idea of what you're in for, I didn't want to show you beforehand, but this is the code that they have worked through. Um, so, welcome. Thank you. That also means that we have a full planning commission. We haven't had a full planning commission that I know of since, since I've been here. Especially that highly qualified. Very good yeah. news. Yeah. Really good now. Okay. Next item on here is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, as, as was discussed, we'd adopt it from, from here forward. Uh, if there's interest in moving any of the items, we can do so. I, I would need a motion to, to move the items or a motion to adopt the agenda is, as is. Make a motion that we uh, move uh, 7A and 7C to the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Okay, then we need a motion to adopt the agenda. I make a motion we adopt the agenda. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? None. All right. On to the consent agenda. So now I'd need a motion to adopt the consent. Is it adopt the consent agenda? Okay. A motion to adopt the consent agenda, and it would take care of those. Uh, items. I, we Let's adopt see. the consent agenda. Second. I'm sorry. A motion and a second. Yes. yes. Would Would you like to explain what that is, since it's a new item, uh, so sure. that the public understands what we're doing that's different? Sure. Do you want to explain it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a, a consent agenda um, allows us, if there are items that require little or no discussion, um, instead of including them as part of the, the regular course, we can, have, we can approve them as part of a consent agenda and then just have one motion that adopts all of those items. Uh, so what we've done, we have the approval of the minutes, which is generally, you know, if we have corrections, we're supposed to get them into the city recorder before the, the meeting. Um, those corrections are, are typically made. And then uh, we have a resolution, 2017-12, uh, uh, which is a resolution that we're, we're considering because there's been a change of ownership. It's not really anything that, that uh, that we've done, we're just basically recognizing that there's been a change of ownership. And then uh, resolution 2017-13, reauthorizing the Malala Enterprise Zone. We actually already had a motion to reauthorize the Enterprise Zone, but as a technicality, we need to have a, a resolution to do so. So those items, we've already had discussion. Um, instead of the mayor sitting up here and telling everybody what they're all about, we, we have the opportunity to move them into a consent agenda and then just take care of them all at once. You're welcome. Very good. All right. I'd need a motion to adopt the consent agenda. Yeah. So, uh, motion and a second. I'm sorry. We have, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Did we have uh, any amendments to the uh, to the minutes? I, any further amendments other than the corrected version that we have? I believe so. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. that was included. Okay. Okay. So we'd want the 
corrected, want the corrected yeah. version. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? None. So be it. All right. That brings us to the public hearing. I have a script to keep myself from getting in trouble. So tonight we have a public hearing regarding a new development code initiated by the city of Malala and is recommended for approval by the Planning Commission. Tonight's public hearing process is a legislative action pursuant to section 19.04.070D of the Malala Municipal Code. The purpose of the public hearing is to take testimony from persons affected by the City Council's request, requested land use, action, and ordinance adoption. The public hearing is your opportunity to comment on the application before Council makes a decision. Before I open the public hearing, we need to ensure that those of you in the audience tonight understand how to participate in the public hearing. If you wish to make any comments during tonight's public hearing, please wait until you are recognized and then come up to the microphone. Clearly state your name and address for the record before commenting on the proposal. Please keep your comments brief and under three minutes. While anyone may comment during the public hearing, the ability to appeal the council's decision is generally limited to those who have participated in tonight's proceedings. So if there's, if there's any sort of issue in the future and you want to appeal the decision that's been made, saying something, stating your opposition tonight is important. Uh, at this time, I will open the public hearing for file number P-6-14, an application for a new development code initiated by the city of Malala. Will staff please present a summary of the staff report? Yeah, and I'm going to begin the process here real quick. Um, I'm going to turn the staff report provision over to Stacy Goldstein, our consultant in this matter, in a moment. But I just wanted to give the council and, and those of you in the audience a, a brief history of the process of our development code. Um, this process started almost two years ago. Uh, next week it will be two years. And um, the Planning Commission has reviewed this and obviously provided the City Council with a recommendation of approval. Uh, that's a recommendation that the Council should consider but not be bound by. And um, so what you have is a, is a development code in front of you tonight that amends the existing code. The existing code has a number of inconsistencies, uh, a number of problems in it not only from a staff level, but also from a uh, development or developer level. Uh, the city tried to amend the development code before I arrived here. Um, that, that process stalled for some reason, so we picked it up again and we're finishing the process. The code before you is a code that complies with the statewide planning goals. It complies with administrative rules that the state of Oregon has required city, that requires cities to um, comply with complies with your comprehensive plan and other documents that we have. Uh, you're also going through a transportation system plan process that will be done in uh, next summer sometime. At that point, we'll probably look at amending some, uh, some uh, portions of this code. This code is a, is a document that can be changed. It's not, a, it's not a code that sets fees. It's not a code that... Um, uh, deals with existing properties, it deals with future development and kind of provides a framework for how the community develops and how you would like to see your community develop from here forward. We did receive some comments from some folks in the community over the last few days. Uh, that's uh, in this citizen comment component there. We, we do have a couple of comments from uh, two city councilors, Councilor Boreth and Mayor Thompson. We also have some comments from uh, Mr. Bill Avison. We also received comments. Oh, I gotta get a name here from David Church, um, and those comments are in this packet of citizen comments on the development code that that uh, you'll want to consider tonight. Uh, those will be included as part of the record. It's part card. of the record. Uh, it is part of the record, and um, each of those comments have been, been provided to uh, Stacy Goldstein so she can respond to some of those. What you have tonight is a, de is a decision to make on the development code. You can, as we talked earlier, you can adopt the code as is uh, following testimony from the public. 
you can adopt, you can make changes to the code, you can tweak it, if you will, um, you can have it brought back. Uh, one suggestion I made to you earlier is that you have first reading, and if you do decide, if you do decide to make some changes, you have first reading, bring those changes back. Um, it's a long, it's been a long process, and don't forget that you, you know, we will find things six months from now that uh, as, as we work through this code that either we don't like or we didn't include in this, in this document, things change drastically in time. There's a use out there that we haven't considered yet. And we'll want to make amendments to this to keep it updated. We won't want to wait five years before we look at it. We'll want to do it continuously. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Stacy Goldstein and let her yes. provide you with everything oh, you want to know. there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, what I'd like to do is just quickly touch upon the staff report that's in your packet, um, real brief, and then I'd like to uh, discuss some of these comments that came in and then hear from you regarding your comments as well. Um, <clears throat> so you have a staff report uh, uh, regarding this legislative uh, matter. Um, the report uh, provides the findings necessary for replacing titles 16, 16 through 20 of your code and um, replacing it with this complete brand new development code. If you recall from earlier meetings, this development code was not a side-by-side -side comparison with the old code, new code. This was um, out with the old and in with the new. Uh, I think we recognized early on um, that the old code just didn't work for a variety of reasons. It was made up of sections from uh, all over the country. There were lots of inconsistencies and uh, it didn't support uh, your, um, your vision and your planning documents. Um, so the goal of the project was to create this new development code uh, and it implements a couple of, of really important documents. It implements your uh, comprehensive plan that was adopted in 2014, uh, your, Mal your Malala TSP, which uh, it incorporates the old version. I know you're going through a, uh, a new TSP study and so what comes out of that will at some point be folded into this code. Um, it also um, looked at your downtown, it's called the Downtown Malala Development and Oregon Highway 211 Streetscape Plan. Uh, it was a plan that was done back in 2007. And then also the Transportation and Growth Management uh, Guidance, Best Practices for Local Land Use Requirements. Um, the document that is in front of you this was based on uh, lots of input from, we had a citizen code committee that was made up of uh, residents from the community, business owners, uh, members of the council, members of the planning commission. Um, it was also uh, made up of, uh, from input from a project management team that included myself, Dan, Aldo, and your uh, public works director. And then we also had community meetings where we invited the public in and we said, hey Malala, what do you think? Are we on the right track? Comments, thoughts, and it was super helpful hearing that. It helped us to put together what you have in front of you. Um, and then last but not least, we had a number of work sessions with both the council and the planning commission. Uh, super helpful again, lots of good feedback and ideas and we took all of that and we have the document that is in front of you this evening. I apologize, I'm getting over the, the cold here. Um, there were a number of outcomes that were identified for the project, uh, that being uh, to provide a design framework for downtown Malala, how do we create a vibrant downtown? Um, ensuring that design is of top quality uh, for commercial, residential, and mixed-use development, uh, enhanced walking and, and biking in Malala, and improving connections for all modes of transportation, whether it be auto, pedestrian, cyclist. And then last but not least, uh, preparing a development code that would be easy for staff to administer, but also so that the public could understand. Um, as you'll see, the new code has 
uh, graphics included, which is uh, super helpful. So the new code, I'm just going to hit on a couple of things, what it provides. Uh, it has building and site design standards along with illustrations that contribute to beautifying uh, downtown Malala and also to help implement uh, economic development and stir um, new uh, business, supporting existing business in the community. As, as we went through this exercise, we always had on our lenses of how do we make sure that we are uh, being supportive of economic development opportunities in the community. Um, there's also pedestrian-oriented development standards. One thing that we heard from uh, people uh, in our open houses was, you know, we want to make sure that we have this walkable community. Um, we also included in this code off-street parking standards that are flexible. Um, for both new businesses and new developments. Um, again, we were looking at this through the lens of economic development in the Central Business District. Uh, we wanted to give business owners options for meeting parking. And then last but not least, uh, we met early on with folks to talk about what land uses uh, would you like to see that are currently not in your development code? And there were things that came up like uh, it would be nice to have maybe a small winery in the downtown core, uh, maybe microbrewery, and there were things like that that were not in your code. And so we went ahead and we updated the code to include some of these uh, newer uses that you see today. I am not going to go into the nitty gritty of the findings, they're quite dry. Um, and I don't want to waste your time. Um, we found that it met the statewide planning goals. You've got a nice table that takes up, oh, I'm going to say 10 pages. So unless the council would like me to, I'm going to just leave that one alone. And uh, what I'd like to do instead is move on to some of these comments that came in and discuss that with you, if that's OK. Mayor, Thanks. Council? Okay. Um, no objection. Any objections? objections? Okay. So I think the way to, I'd like to proceed, if it's okay with you, and if not, please tell me otherwise, um, maybe start with the comments that came in from the uh, Malala Fire folks. They asked some really good questions. They'd sent an email to uh, Dan Huff. Oh, okay. Sorry, I heard buzzing. Um, and I don't think there's a whole lot to discuss here because Dan was able to answer these, these comments, and I don't think anybody is here from the uh, Fire uh, Bureau um, in response. So I'll highlight these quickly. Um, there was concern about... Um, during their seismic upgrade, um, how will this affect them? Um, and the response that we provided to them is that this won't affect them. Um, worst case scenario, we might need to uh, issue a temporary use permit, but uh, all in all, this, uh, this new code should not affect that. Um, we received a comment from um, Mike, can you pronounce his last name for me? Thank you. Um, who is complimenting something in the development code here where it says where applicable codes require emergency vehicle access, approaches and driveways shall be designed and constructed to accommodate emergency vehicle apparatus and shall conform to applicable fire protection requirements. And so the comment that we received uh, and, and I concur wholeheartedly is that it's important for the city and the fire district to make sure that we are working together uh, when these applications do come in so that we hear from them because their comments are so <coughs> important uh, with these land use matters. Um, there was a concern uh, regarding traffic calming devices. The standard reads, the city may require the installation of traffic calming features such as traffic circles, curb extensions, et cetera. Um, and the comment here was that the concern is that there are some very good ones and then there's some very bad ones. And so um, 
He goes on to say that um, they might be necessary in high pedestrian traffic areas, but they just wanted to make sure that they will still have input on what type of devices and they'll have a say. And, and again, this, this code incorporates close to uh, coordination for development ap applications with the uh, fire folks. Um, glasses have to come off again, sorry. On and off, on and off. Then there was a section in here <clears throat> uh, under fire code standards and the common, the, rather the standard reads, where fire code standards conflict with city standards, the city shall consult with the fire marshal in determining appropriate requirements. The city shall have the final determination regarding applicable standards. This was apparently the most concerning and the way that they were reading it uh, was that if there was a conflict between the fire code and city standards, then the city would have the final say. And Dan, I think, hit it on the head where he said, um, uh, no, it, you know, it, it does, it, it, the wording is a little confusing that there are code standards that the fire marshal and the chief have ultimate authority over and we would not interfere. Um, and, and this is true, I mean, fire codes, will always take precedent over the land use codes for obvious reasons, and that's why we work closely with them uh, on these matters. So that was the gist of their comments. I think they were satisfied, and if there's any, if there's no questions, I'll put this one to bed and move on to the next. I guess a bit water first, excuse me. Um, Let's talk next, again, glasses off, my apologies here. That is the noise, parking. Excuse me, I got two piles going here, if you bear with me. Um, let's talk, if we may, about the letter submitted to the record from the focus group out of La Jolla, California. And I'll give you a minute to pull that one up. This was uh, from David Church, and then attached to that was an email from a Scott Franklin, uh, looks like a civil engineer, a PE, and a, or a land surveyor uh, at a Clackamas. And where to begin? Um, so I read this letter, and the takeaway for me, a couple of things. Um, number one, this letter came in today. It came in after 3 p.m. This project has been going on now for over just under two years. Um, we worked closely with our citizen committee who had local business people on there. Um, we had open houses and there was no issues brought up as it relates to these sections of codes that are identified here. Um, what's of concern to me as the consultant is that it I'm not quite sure how to address this in the sense that it feels like what they're asking for is to put a pause in our process so that we can revisit the work that we've completed to fit their development, which is something I strongly urge that you don't do. From what I understand, they have been working on a preliminary site plan. It is not a live application before the city. And they have, de they have designed it under your old, old code. Um, I don't know why the consultant for that project never reached out during their review and their iterations to say, hey staff, are, will there be any code changes coming up that we should be aware of? Um, so it seems here that they're not stating that there's any particular issues with these various code sections other than 
it doesn't fit what they want to do. Um, and that's a concern to me because we have worked so closely with the community to identify the vision for the city. And we recognize that the old code didn't work. So I'm going to kind of leave this one out there. We can discuss it further, council and city manager. Um, there is one letter in relation to that from Mr. Avison that I feel is specific enough that we could talk about. He was on our citizen code committee. And <clears throat> this letter, if I'm reading this correctly, oops, wrong letter, sorry. This looks like my desk at home, I must confess. Um, where did it go? Uh, is this Mr. Avis? Oh yeah, yeah Avison Lumber. Yeah, yeah. I had it right in front of me. Sorry. Um, so Mr. Avison brings up um, some concerns uh, with drive-through uses, the code provision under 17-3.2, and we discussed this, uh, if my memory serves me right, with our citizen com code committee uh, for a bit because there was a lot of really good discussion about what's appropriate for Malala. And the takeaway was that drive-through uses really were not appropriate for your downtown core. Mm -hmm. Apparently you have, I believe, two existing today and they are problematic for traffic patterns uh, and <coughs> equally important, it, they're problematic for pedestrian, uh, for pedestrians moving through the vicinity of the drive-throughs. And so what we decided based on these discussions with the Citizen Code Committee and then again at the Planning Commission, because the Planning Commission also, they were curious about this as well, um, we decided that it made sense to allow these uses in the C2 zone, which is more of your general commercial type use zones, but provide a separation of 400 feet from each drive-through use. And the point of doing that is to prevent a couple of things. One, if you have too many that are clustered together, you will typically wind up with a lot of turning movements and queuing problems and traffic tie-ups, whether it's on street or off street in a, in a shopping center. So that was kind of the, the takeaway there is, you know, if you have too many of these, you wind up with a lot of left turning movements in and out of the queuing area. Um, the second part of this <clears throat> pertains to the city's desire to have a more walkable community. And if you have too many of these drive-through windows, <clears throat> you need to have a lot of curb cuts and that interferes with pedestrian safety and pedestrian comfort moving through a community because you're concerned about cars coming in and out. And that's why the 400 foot is a common standard used in other codes. Um, this is not just an arbitrary number. Um, it's used to, to allow for adequate separation. One thing I also want to point out as it relates to the uses we're not limiting the, the retail or the, the restaurant uses per se. They are allowed, but we're putting a limitation on the distances of the drive-through components of those businesses. And I know Mr. Avison provided a nice letter here. Um, it sounds like, um, I'm just briefly kind of scanning it again. Uh, I guess there's two national firms looking at uh, his land for development and they want a development, they want to develop in ways that would help revitalize Malala and allow residents to shop local. Um, 
and that they'd be unable to proceed with their projects um, with this drive-through restriction. Um, and then he provided a map pharmacies. So the question, I guess, that is presented to you as the decision makers is, you know, what are your thoughts as, you know, as far as allowing uh, drive-through businesses to be close to one another? Do you think that there would be potential negative impacts for allowing that um, versus keeping that 400 foot linear requirement to just allow for adequate separation. That's kind of the big one uh, from uh, Mr. Avison. And because these two are tied together, do we want to discuss this before we move on, Mr. Mayor? Is that how you'd like to do it, kind of individually? We could talk with the council. Or did you want me um, to go through all the. I, I, I think that's a big one, yeah. So far I've heard you talk about conforming to all modes of transportation, but what I read in the code, cha code changes, just about everything in there says bikeable, walkable, bikeable, walkable, bikeable, walkable. So are we conforming to, are we alienating businesses from coming in by saying, Gosh, you only can't walk over that because cars come in. I mean, no, I think the list. I mean, if you step back and you look at the list of uses that are in the code, that list of uses, allowed uses, that's been expanded. You have more opportunities for different businesses to come in. What this code provision does, it eliminates potential traffic jams and traffic situations that could occur in your community as a result of having too many of these close together. We've already got that. We're still going to have with housing. Councilor Swigert, we're, we're still going to have an opportunity to discuss all this at the at the end of the public hearing okay. versus having all the all the discussion during okay. the, the public hearing and we have some more testimony that we're going to receive. So what I'd like to do is Let's, let's go ahead and go through the items. You can respond to them. We'll have the people that we have here to testify go ahead and come up and give us their testimony, and then we can go ahead and close the public hearing and go into our discussion. If that works for everybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Do you want me then to continue with the Please. next? Okay. Um, so that one. And I believe, are these the final comments uh, from Mayor Thompson? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Mayor Thompson submitted some uh, questions here to address. Um, the first one is regarding, let's see here, uh, Table 17-3.5.030A. Uh, and that is in regard to multifamily parking. And I'm just going to pull up my... So just to clarify and make sure that we, we all um, understand, it's parking on landscaping. So what's provided here for the parking space requirements, these are minimum parking spaces required. It doesn't say that that's the number that an apartment developer has to provide. Uh, an apartment developer, they don't want their buildings sitting vacant because, you know, if they have the need to have additional parking, then that's something that they're going to ask for. What this does, setting this at one space per dwelling unit, is a couple of things. Right now, the state is dealing with an affordable housing crisis. It's, it's a big issue. Every parking space that you require a developer to build adds to the cost that is then 
sent on to somebody who's either renting or somebody who will buy that unit. So by having it at one space for dwelling, we're trying to ensure that we're providing housing alternatives for those folks who it might not be a situation where you have two people in two cars. It might be uh, a single parent in a one bedroom apartment. It might be an elderly couple who wants to stay in the community and they've downsized, they're no longer in their home, but they want to live in a downtown environment or they want to live just, they want to stay in the city. Um, they've been here, they don't want to go anywhere. Um, so we looked at this as being able to provide more affordable options for people, but yet recognize that in this case, a housing developer will build parking that they see for their business model. So we were trying to provide flexibility without over providing parking and hence making the cost of housing go up. So that was the first one. The second. Um, I actually had my second question answered. Regarding the landscaping? Yes. Okay. And we, okay. I, unless council wants to hear it again. Okay. No. I'll save okay. you from that one. So that is that, and I don't believe there were any other letters to the record that we received. So that will conclude. Just the. Yes, and what is that? Yes. And if oh, it's so can I just. Okay. Um, so there was a discussion um, <clears throat> or emails about um, the drive-throughs, and I just took 10 minutes out of my day and went online and just wanted to see what other cities were doing. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, a little spot to show you where other cities are and, and what their code says. And um, my only comment on it is that <clears throat> the Portland and the Beaverton, um, they say that basically mm -hmm. it shouldn't interfere, interfere with parking or vehicle circulation. And I don't believe that that is strong enough language. And I, in my opinion, um, I think it's better to put um, a minimum linear foot within our code and that amount can be negotiated, but I don't think that the Beaverton and the Portland language is right for Malala. And that was just my, my comment. Well, thank you for doing that. All right, so staff is completed. Thank you. Okay. I had to stop you last time. Do you want to come up and, and finish? We'll give you a first shot since, since we had to have you sit down. Hello again. Uh, my name is Angela Lake. I'm currently residing in Kelso, Washington, uh, owner of property 212 Shaver. Um, and this was the property that I was talking about that zoning had changed from when we first purchased it. This Passing this or being in favor of this plan will help us in regards that if something did happen to the house that we would be able to save at least or try to do something to it. That way we're not out with a mortgage and a property that's worth a, a tiny amount of, of that mortgage. But um, I just wanted to strongly urge you guys to consider that since we're not the only property and housing in that area that we wouldn't be the only ones affected by it and, and that that is something to, to consider when when voting on this. And Aldo, you were getting ready to correct me. Oh, no. It's just <laughs> in, our, in our current code, um, so that house is considered a non-conforming use and uh, with that, uh, our current code doesn't have any provision for um, fire uh, if a house is burnt down. Um, and it's, I believe it states if it's damaged more than 50% of the um, current assets value based on Clackamas County, it needs to be rebuilt by rebuilt to, um, in conformity with the code. But in this code, um, 
we do have exceptions for fire and any other catastrophe that what would happen to the house. So um, there's just it's just a different um, it, in this code it does add um, an exception for for those type of incidences. So it sounds like that would be in your benefit, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Council, have any questions? Uh, just to clarify, you're saying that if her house burned down where it sits today, she could rebuild it. Yes. E yes. In this. In yeah. If we adopt the new code. code. If, yeah. Under the yes. Yeah. Yeah. Under the correct. Provisions, Would, but yes. nonetheless, there the, she could rebuild. Yeah. The, yeah. the language specifically is uh, in section 1.4, and if you look at 1.4b, destruction. There's a statement in there that says this does not preclude the reestablishment of a non-conforming use after fire or other catastrophic event as allowed under section 17.14.020. That's language that isn't in our current code. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. I just wanted to point out that we have a lot of historic buildings in Malala, so this is a good way for them to be able to maybe preserve those without having to rip them down. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy Cox. My name is Tracy Cox. I live at 14411 South Buckner Creek Road in Molino. I have uh, two pieces of light industrial property, and this is the part that concerns me in the code. They are located on Industrial Way. When we purchased this property, the current use was allowed. Now it is listed as prohibited. At the time, there were 32 uses specifically laid out as to what was allowed. Now there are only 12. Three of those are for governmental use, one of which is a park, uh, and nine are for private business. Two of them refer to newspapers, as in a newspaper stand and newspaper printing. Two are for wood products, a sawmill, which we already have several of, and lumber sales as well, we have that. The next is for a veterinary clinic, which We've got quite a few of those. Uh, that leaves us with four for other specific businesses. And my question is, why are we being so restrictive in our industrial use property? And why are we limiting these businesses from future expansion or from the property from being able to be changed to a different use should those tenants leave? The businesses on my property provide approximately 45 living wage jobs. It will be hard for these businesses to maintain a business plan if they are dependent on constantly changing overseeing staff, such as yourself, um, that is elected or appointed. Uh, you, you, know, you can't make decisions if, if staff is, and the opinion of staff is constantly changing. So I'm asking the city to allow me to keep what I purchased, which was conforming use, um, with a variety of options for that use. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Bill Avison. Good evening. I'm Bill Avison. Uh, several properties. Let's see, 535 West Main would be a good one for the record. That's the one we're talking about tonight. Thank you, Mayor and Council and City staff for my chance to uh, talk. And Stacy, I think I want to address some of your comments if I could. Uh, you, you could all had a chance to read the letter. I think the my most uh, alarming thing when we put this together, only had a couple days, and let me explain why, is I did sit on the Citizen Advisory Committee, and it was my understanding that the 400-foot lineal restriction only applied to C1. And actually, the first tables, it had CU for uh, the central district and then it went to a complete no in some of the, the new drafts so I had sent some emails out in fact my letter is in a previous uh, comment to the Planning Commission and it's shown as an exhibit but I never saw it in any of your uh, paperwork but it, I did say I think this was a typo and I kind of sent the message to Aldo and I never heard anything so I still thought well it's a typo you guys are gonna fix it and the, the thing I noticed early this week that it wasn't a typo and that you were going to apply, or the, the proposed code would apply the 400 feet to C2. So that's where we came up with this map. Well, basically what this shows is that you can do one or two drive-throughs in the entire city with a 400-foot um, distance between them. That's what the little red dots show is all the existing drive-throughs. 
And, and Councillor Borth, I understand your concern. Uh, the one, paragraphs one through four in the code, the way I read it, strictly restricts a lot of things that go on through drive throughs mainly transportation. You can't queue out in the public streets. I think, uh, Stacy, you mentioned that curb cuts was an issue. There aren't any curb cuts from what I understand from our buyer and developer and uh, the project engineer is going to speak to that, I believe, next. Um, so that's not going to interfere with your public streets. That's a key thing. The Again, the 400 foot, it's just not really workable when you look at the list of people. Not You're not going to have 25 fast foods, not to scare anyone, but the, you guys saw the list. Those are all people that would could be interested in Malala. You can pick one or two, including the banks, including a post office drop box. That's considered a drive through You get one of those, you get one other piece. And as this map shows, the only property that's really clean is the property that's west of ours that, that has not doesn't have any drive-throughs existing in that 400 foot uh, circumference. So that's, uh, I'm not gonna keep dwelling on that. I think the one thing that, that everyone probably knows, we've had mill property here forever. We're trying to get it developed. We have kind of a, an eyesore, as everyone knows, across from Bymark. The first time, the reason this is a major deal is Malala has not had a major commercial development, and I'm talking major, and, and I think some of the other folks are going to speak to that later, in probably 15 years. I think Safeway's the last one. And so that's why, you know, they did not look, and I'm not, I'll let them speak for themselves, but they did not really have an opportunity to look at the code until they had their tenants lined up, which was literally in the last week or two. And so, that, so they came up with site plans and said, wait a minute, this probably isn't going to work. So again, I'll let them uh, speak to that. If there's any questions, uh, again, I, uh, we want to work with you. I think there's a way to work this out. Uh, as Dan said, we were working on this code for years. I sat, I think, at this podium, or stood at this podium probably 15 years ago when Mayor Clark adopted the code. And, you know, there were some problems as you, you're trying to fix it. And we said, well, let's get that right. And he said, Bill, he said, let's pass it and we'll fix it later. You know, that kind of sounds like Congress. So not, not to make a joke of that, but just, you know, we work so hard. Let's see if we can get it right. And I think we're real close. And I'm not just speaking for ourselves. If we didn't own this property, you'd run into the same problem, the same set of developers, same tenants, you know, and, and you know, they're probably not going to want to come if you make the code so tough because that word will get out. So anyway, that's, that's it. Any questions? Thank you for putting that together. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Franklin. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Franklin with the uh, engineering firm Packland. 10135 Southeast Sunnyside Road, Suite 200, Clackamas. Um, I represent the, the developer at the northeast corner of Main Street and Dixon, uh, Bill's property. And um, we were just aware of, of this new code language uh, actually this morning. Uh, as Bill mentioned, my client is uh, was trying to get his property mix, his tenant mix, and uh, not until he was able to do that could we dive, dive deep into uh, to the, the current layout. So uh, my firm has been doing, and I have been, been doing this work uh, on the, the commercial, uh, retail commercial side for uh, about 18 years. And I represent uh, local, regional, national retailers, uh, developers, architects, uh, work directly with retailers. And in that, that experience, um, there are a lot of things that, that drive their development. So obviously the codes do, uh, but a big thing that drives their development is, is cost. We just talked about costs on the multifamily side on the parking and how important that was for, uh, to, to limit those costs. But the discussion about moving buildings out along the street, uh, adding transparency to it, uh, basically shaping that as a, a more uh, urban development 
commercial development that you might see in Beaverton or you might see in Portland or Hillsboro. Um, those things add tremendously to the cost of the project. You have retailers that are have their the internal workings of their store fixed, and then they build the the exterior around that. They build the elevations around that. They have their stock rooms where they need to have them to to, to deal with their their national programs, and to add windows to some of those back stock room areas, uh, you're going to end up with views into their stock rooms. And, and it adds to the cost of the site, adds to the cost of the development. Pushing the buildings out to the, the street frontage, uh, again, adds cost to the development. But what it also does is it puts the loading operations and, and the, the, really the, the, the back room uses, it commingles that with the, uh, the customer use because there's, you have to load the store in some fashion. And which, when it's pushed out into the street, what you end up with is having to load that store internally. Um, a more traditional development loads those typically in the back, so you can avoid those conflicts. So that then becomes a, a safety issue. That's not to say that that never happens in, in other more urban development, but in more urban development, the market is different, the, de the customer density is different, and the store projections are much different. There's more budget with those retailers to, to be able to make that expenditure, that investment, to, uh, to change their buildings, to change how they operate and so forth. In, a, uh, in some of the smaller markets that we work in all over the state, that opportunity isn't there. Those retailers won't make that investment. And so what you end up with is uh, a situation where you have retail users that will, will come in, see the code changes, and, and developers will see these code changes, and it'll scare them away. Uh, Bill just talked about a, a, uh, uh, the last major commercial development that occurred was, was some 15 years ago. You may be looking at something similar with code elements that, that, uh, uh, that are this restrictive. Now, there may be some other alternatives out there. There may be some things that, that you could come up with that ends up with a, a happy medium between the two. Um, that's, that's certainly possible. I haven't had an opportunity to dig through the code. There could still be some other elements in here that I haven't discovered yet. But there could be some other, uh, an opportunity for, for, uh, for some common ground there. Earlier discussions about uh, walkability. There are a lot of things that can occur with walkability with different code elements. There's a lot more pedestrian amenities that can occur. Um, there are a lot of different different options there, and we've seen those throughout the West where we've done work. Um, I guess the the Bill talked a little bit about uh, uh, the drive-throughs, and uh, he's correct in in this particular development and, and in many developments. If you look at the the, the city, you have drive-throughs, and most of those drive-throughs don't go directly out onto the street. So the concern about conflict, pedestrian conflict. Uh, with the streets, that's not there with those drive-throughs. There are, are lots of ways that you can plan a site that address specific pedestrian vehicle conflicts within that site layout. A lot of different opportunities there. Uh, but most of all, it's, it's, it's market-driven. And what you, you could end up with is a code that scares away retailers, uh, scares, scares away tenants, and those tenants aren't, um, they're, they're things that uh, a lot of people like to see, banks, coffee shops. Um, and, and those don't have to be national retailers. They can be investors in your own community, people who've lived here for ages trying to find a way to reinvest back in their community. Uh, as written, it would prohibit that or make it so uh, economically unfeasible that uh, they'd have to look elsewhere. Yes, that's that's the the uh, the main part. Bill touched on uh, a comment about if you if you approve it and then try to fix it later. Um, folks have done that, and we've seen that in, in other jurisdictions. But what you end up with is is 
you've got a limited window <coughs> in a current economic cycle. And if you approve something that scares those tenants away, it could be another eight or 10 year cycle before that comes back. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I guess on behalf of my client, we'd request that, uh, that, there, that there be some time set aside to go through this a little bit more. Uh, I know the city's been working on it for a long time. Uh, it's not to, to discount that effort. Um, my client does appreciate that effort. But trying to find a, a way to deal with some of the concerns that generated the, the new code uh, and trying to work through a different, perhaps a different solution for that. And so my client would request a, either a set aside or a continuance to, uh, to have time to work through those things. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks. Dennis Randazzo. <clears throat> Good. More papers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a paper explosion going on here. Thank you. Thank you. Is this a uh, making sure we're not getting in trouble. <clears throat> uh, my name's Dennis Randazzo. Uh, I'm a real estate broker. Actually uh, have been uh, working for uh, probably the last 12 years in an effort to peddle some land in Malala <laughs> for the benefit of this community. So what I handed out to you, uh, there's been a lot of discussion here about tenants and developers and code descriptions and those kinds of things, and a lot of technical stuff, which is great, and those people are, you know, that's something for all of you to absorb, and those people are better equipped to speak to that. I wanted to hand you these site plans because this is the reality of what's going on right now. These two developers, they're different developers uh, on these particular site plans have spent six figures worth of revenue in assessing these projects and soliciting these tenants. These are real deals. These are national tenants that are uh, projected to fill these spots. In fact, one of the developers has had uh, corporate committee approval on a couple of his tenants and they're negotiating leases. These are projects that are in the queue that have specifically come to Malala because they want to be here. Part of that is being driven by the crazy housing market that's happened and Malala's exponential growth over the last couple of years. I think we're all ecstatic over that <laughs> because we've all tried to do business here and the opposite of that marketplace. But this is what's happening. And Dan is correct. You know, I, like I said, I've been here for 12, some odd years working on these projects. And during that whole period of time, the code and the comprehensive plan and all of that has been first and foremost, and it's been just a discussion along all that way. And you're right at the precipice now of getting this fixed and getting this done. But the reality is a couple of those components will destroy these deals. I can tell you that if, you, if this code is amended and passed in its present form tonight, both of these developments are gone. These tenants are not coming. And Scott spoke to that in an MSA that might be a million people, like the Portland market, they may be able to adapt to some of those changes in the configuration of their buildings and the orientation. But in a market like Malala and any other small community, they can't do that. They have to maximize their position in that market to be able to sell enough product to pay the rent and service those stores. And that's not gonna happen under a small part of the code, and Scott mentioned that, he hasn't had a chance to look at it, and, and I haven't, frankly, to be honest with you, looked through the whole thing either. 
but the drive-through, the orientation, and some of the things that were spoke about tonight, those are constraints that will create a situation for these developers to pass on these projects. <coughs> projects that frankly are potentially a couple hundred thousand square feet of vital services that this community needs to support this housing growth uh, that the general public would love to have. I get, if you'll notice, there's a proposed grocery store and a couple of these things. I can't, in fact, most of the people in this room and many of you have contacted me direct, get us a grocery store, get us, get us a, you know, some food choices, get us some restaurants. We have a chance to do that now and some of those things are components in these two plans, but they will not come if this code is passed in its present form. So I, my message is you're this close. You know, don't make a mistake that a few weeks or a couple of months could fix that everybody could get together. There's a consensus group. There's a, you know, everybody has got the same goal. We want to see Malala grow. We want to see the commercial development of the community that's designed to be commercially developed and the continuation of your housing growth. And this is a vital component to do that. And it will go away. And we're, we're all starting over. And it may be, it's been 12 years <laughs> to get to this. I don't know if it's going to be another 12 years. But the reality is you have an opportunity to make some of these deals now and do this and 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 if in a few weeks or a few months and maybe not even a few months a couple of months to fix a couple of these things I think is time well spent thank you thanks can I ask Council. a question yes yeah. please um, you, you've mentioned a couple of things what are the two main things that you think are most problematic that you've seen well the orientation with respect to moving the building the building sites and, and changing those. The other thing that that does, when you, when you change those orientations and you start mixing service and, and customer areas, then you have potential for, I, I mean, it's, you know, a delivery truck that's driving, that's got a 55-foot trailer that's going to be bringing product through the front door or, or has to, ha they have to actually drive their truck through the parking areas to get to an area. You know, they can't see a four-year-old that's this tall mm -hmm. that may ultimately jump out of somebody's car at a parking spot. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's an issue. The drive-through thing, I guarantee you that with respect to the city, Dan and Aldo and, you know, they're not going to allow a project to be situated <laughs> that's going to create a public safety problem. So that, you know, and that's first and foremost, you know, there's the potential aesthetic maybe discrepancy or discussion between, well, we've got a lot of drive-throughs, but the reality is the drive-through component of these developments pay the most rent. They pay the most rent to subsidize the balance of the, <laughs> of the development to make it feasible. And I can tell you emphatically that these particular projects, there's not much room for error. You know, it's, we're in a small community that has 10,000 people. They're not getting the rents that they get in Portland, that they get in Seattle, that they get in Eugene or Salem, or, or even Sandy and some of those things. And we, we don't have Highway 97 going through the middle of our community. We don't get those rents. And the, the land prices are reflective of that, but the cost of a brick and the cost of a two by four and the cost of an electrical outlet, those are all the same. That, that's a static amount of money that's gonna be spent. Scott you know, uh, spoke to that on the overall development of that project. These two, these two projects alone you know, are gonna represent a 30 or $40 million investment in Malala once it's all said and done. The tenants portion, the developers portion, the landowners portion, and, and that's a lot of urban renewal money, and that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs that aren't here right now. And people who will continue to buy homes here so that the housing market can continue to grow like it has. I mean, it's all, that's all part of the snowball effect. Thank you. I had a question. Uh -huh. Do you currently have an application in with the city on these developments? Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that either developer has a formal application in. So no. you don't have an application in right now? No. Yeah, and, and that's not for me to do. Okay. 
Thank you. No. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> the the two items that the last three commenters are concerned about. One obviously is the linear footage issue with drive throughs. And if you look at the drive up section in the code as proposed, if you had it's on one twenty six of two fifty nine or it's section seventeen point three two seventeen three point two point zero six zero. There's some other provisions in there that require that the access not come off of a public street it has to be internally accessed and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But one of them is the 400 foot requirement on <coughs> the linear footage in between. The other one is um, for building ori orientation and design. And if you look at, uh, what's the section over there? That is section 17 3.2.040 uh, C. Well, it depends. There's some large format developments and then there's some. Um, non-residential building formats and that's really where you require the building to be set at this up towards the street which is what they've been talking about there's some ways there, there's some you can add some pedestrian amenities and some different things to kind of get some gains back and forth but those are the two issues that they're talking about. okay mm -hmm. and I think that you know when people talk about this code you know I don't know I don't know what the use is you know um, there's a couple of properties on industrial way I don't know which prop what what the use is there but um, when you talk about this code there's a lot more than just these two issues to deal with with this code that we solve with this code so um, you know if you want to if you if you want to consider doing an alternative um, not adopting the entire code or removing a certain aspect of the code or or something like that would you know maybe something to consider but there's a lot more to this code than just these two issues that we're talking about right now doesn't mean they're not important but all right that's all I have cards for is there anybody else that would please Name and address for the record, if Hi. you would. I'm Terry Shankel, and I live at 84, 840 Explorer Avenue in Malala. Um, I am also a property owner on um, Main Street and on Shaver, and what was once light industrial, of course, has been changed to, I don't even know what my properties are anymore, quite honestly. Um, my concerns are, of, uh, again, like uh, Tracy Cox had said, if when we go to sell our business, are the, pe the existing businesses there, are those people going to be able to still, uh, the person who's buying my business, can he still operate <coughs> the type of business that we have at those two locations? So that's, that's one of my concerns. My other concern is please, councilmen, people, council people, please consider holding off or changing the two items that these guys are talking about. This is really serious to our city. I've lived here for 43 years, probably not as long as Bill, but <laughs> a long, long time. And I've seen things come and go, and there's been so many changes and people changes, and some of it's been good, some of it's been bad. McDonald's has the type of um, problem that they're talking about. Their trucks are coming up, and they park right there in the middle of the road to unload. They don't have a place to do it. And I can't tell you how many times we've come through the Safeway parking lot, and people are darting, and cars are going, and I can't believe there hasn't been an accident there yet. So I, I know that issue is majorly important. And the um, we need businesses here. You know, and there aren't that many properties around to develop really for the businesses. I mean, I think our downtown core is we have a lot of rental space available, but we don't necessarily, unless someone's going to tear down a building and start over, there isn't a lot there for these drive through things. But there is farther going out of town, both directions, I suppose, and again, the industrial way and stuff. I, I really think you need to stop and consider those two things. I know that, you know, yes, you can change things, but I know growing up when we moved into the house that dad built, it was never finished. And you know what? It never got finished until we moved. 
and that's what's going to happen with this too. I hate, you know, that's just, that's just how we are. So anyway, that's what I asked you guys. Please, please consider those two items. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, anyone else? Jim Fitter, 2940 South Holt Road, Colton, Oregon. Uh, I've, been, I've been in front of this mic many, 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 many times. And um, I was, still am president of Team Malala. We have strived for commercial and industrial development in this city for probably 15, I've been at it for 20 years. <clears throat> the city of Malala, when I moved here, <clears throat> had all sorts of stuff downtown. We had three grocery stores, we had two car dealerships. I mean, this city was just a hop and jump in little town. We've watched the decline of it. Granted, 2008, 2009 took its toll on everybody. But we have a chance now with this code and this council to do what's right. We have, I mean, Gerald, as far as public works go, gold-plated. I mean, I, I can't say enough about him. Aldo also. I mean, we, we have the people in place. This document that you have in front of you, <clears throat> I'm going to concur with all of them. We, if you haven't read it entirely and absorbed that whole document, do so and put this, postpone this until you do and see if you like what it says for your city because we need to move forward. We need economic development in the city of Malala. <clears throat> we, we were are way out of balance. Our living wage jobs in Malala is down here, and our housing's up here. That balance, you can't have a city stay balanced that way. We, we, in order for urban renewal money to come back in, we need commercial and industrial development. So my, uh, to you, if you haven't read it, read it, postpone it, do it right. Thank you. Jody? Hi, my name is Jody Newland, and I live at 321 Chinook Street here in Malala. And I just wanted to make a comment about the multifamily housing parking. Um, I understand the idea of wanting to make it cheaper for them to make more units for the space, but I think that whatever we require as a minimum standard, that's what's gonna be followed. So you made great points about maybe there are single parents living in apartments, but on the opposite end of that, there's also cases where there's multiple families living in apartments because it's so expensive. So then there's way more cars. So I think that we need to think about that minimum standard. Do we really want that as a minimum for Malala? Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer? I wanted to also speak to the minimum parking issue. Um, I think before you make a decision on one car per unit, you should drive down Pegasus and maybe talk to the residents there that can't park in their own driveways. That's it. Thank you. Can Anyone else? What, can I know what that relates to? It's, no they're relating to, a, it, what she's talking about is a multifamily housing complex to the north that doesn't have enough parking. Oh. So they Under the current standards. Okay. Anyone else? All right, let me go back to my script. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's simple. The public hearing is now closed. All right, so council. Say anybody, well, you already said, is there anybody else? I, yeah, I already said. Okay. We're good. I follow the script to the T. Right. So the public hearing is now closed. It's now our opportunity to deliberate and ask questions and do whatever else we need to do in order to come up with some sort of a, a decision on it. Uh, we have the opportunity, just so that council is aware, we can, we can approve the code as is. We can approve it with conditions or modifications. Uh, we can deny it or adopt a complete alternative. I, I wouldn't suggest adopting a complete alternative to the code here, considering all the work that's been uh, put into it and the amount of planning knowledge each of us has. Uh, council can also remand the development code back to the planning commission for further consideration. Um, so those those are kind of the options ahead of us and. And we have the opportunity to discuss. Discussion? Anyone? 
Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, so I have something to say about this. We, with this code, you know, we have, uh, and I don't remember which lady was up here, I believe you, but I've been here 64 years, so. Yeah, I understand. We open our arms wide and rubber stamp housing developments, yet we're trying to kill commercial. Now, granted, downtown, the core downtown, with the code that you want, with buildings at the front, I can understand that. That's a must. Out of the core, it's ludicrous. Under those circumstances, by Mart's out of code. Safeway is out of code. Everything, you know, uh, it doesn't make sense. We need, we welcome housing and the people into our town, and then we say, oh, by the way, if you want to shop, yeah, go make money in the other communities. Go give them the money. We don't want it. We can't do that. We cannot do that. I will not do that. Uh, the drive throughs we've got uh, the post office. Right next to the post office, we have the telephone company. Right next to that, we have a bank. All three of drive throughs How many people have died with cars coming out of the drive through One of the hardest drive throughs in this town, which is Big Burger, how many accidents has there been recorded? None that I know of. Um, I see pedestrians walk on those sidewalks and they negotiate the driveways fine. I've seen handicapped people on these sidewalks. They negotiate them just perfectly. So I don't understand that. And my thoughts on the parking in multifamily units, I have a hard time going anywhere in this town and seeing one person working and only one car in a driveway, anywhere. And it's not like we have a huge, you know, transportation. We don't have buses. We don't have a max. So it just, that doesn't make sense either. So under those circumstances, I would have to amend it before I approved it for those three. Okay. And I'd like to first thank the Planning Commission, yes. Stacy, everyone who worked on this. Um, for so long, I was at the first meeting too. I have read the whole thing, by the way. <laughs> can can we have a show of hands? It's been who, who all has actually read the whole thing? I think I read the whole thing. Okay. I fell asleep a few times. I, and I'm not picking on anybody, but I think it's important that people realize we. Yeah. I, it was a lot of reading. It, it was, was a lot of nights falling asleep within my lap yes. and then picking it up the next night. But so. but everyone and the planning commission uh, did a really good job on the two years in the citizen com committee. Um, there are some changes that I think need to be made. And I agree that we definitely want to look toward having a code that will allow retail and industrial to come into our city. So if there's, uh, there are some things in here and the drive-through has certainly been a big issue tonight. Um, I need a little bit better understanding of it. For, for one thing, I think that to have to put anything, one and a third football fields apart, that's how much 400 feet is, is, is like, wow. You know, that's, uh, that's a long ways. Um, and, and, and the building orientation when it comes to being within a shopping center, some of that kind of brings some questions to my mind. So we either, it, to me, we need to make a few changes and um, put it forward. We can't approve it tonight, right? We can. We can have a first. Have a first, first reading, reading, but we can't and actually then it approve has it. You're to correct. Come back. Yes. So one, one way or another, this does have to come back. Mm -hmm. it, yes. I, I don't know if you want to explain that. I I think you said it was. It had to be published eight days prior, so we didn't we didn't meet that window. So the only thing we can do tonight is have a first reading. Right. Correct. Correct. Five days. It has to be available to the public before. Right. Okay. Right. So you have that. So that would be the only thing that we would be looking at doing this evening. There's 
there's several, I think, we can change the effective date. So I, as an example, just to put something out there, we could actually have a first reading and change the effective date to January 1st. The longest period that I heard mentioned by anybody here was a couple of months. I, one of the issues that I take with, with this is this is a process that's been going on for two years, and I'm not picking on you, Bill, but Bill was involved in the process. So, so we've had this vetted by our community, we've had it vetted by our planning commission, Everybody signed off on it and given us, you know, the go ahead and, and here we go. We've got the document in front of us and in the 11th hour, we've got some changes that need to be made. And I understand that and, and I think that even, even if we stop to make these changes at the 11th hour, we're going to have some more changes. And then if we stop to make those at the 11th hour, we're going to have some more changes. It's a living document as we discussed in our, in our work session. It's, it's something that w there's going to be issues. Uh, now, I, I don't think that we just pass it and fix it later. I think we pass it and we, we stay on top of it and we make the changes as they come up. We, you know, we get out in front of it and we talk to people. I, I, make, I, I make significant efforts to, to talk to people in the community about things that are going on. I actually have uh, business owners and, and property owners that I meet with and, and talk to, I asked them, you know, it, 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 what's, you know, what's going on? What sort of issues are you dealing with? And if there's something that comes up, we can, we can deal with that then. Um, so I, I, there's, there's potential for us to, to look at uh, making it effective January 1st, uh, making those changes. And I, I don't disagree that I, a drive through, you know, I, I think that there's other ways to address that standard. Um, I don't know, let's, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I just, I'd hate well, to see us prolong it and prolong it and prolong it and prolong it. I true. Have, has, Bill, the developers in question, can, can I have you come up? I'm gonna, we close the public hearing, so I'm okay to ask him whatever I yes, want now, can, correct? But I have a suggestion when you're done. Okay. Nice. All right, please, come on up. <laughs> uh, Bill, stand there in the middle of the floor. <laughs> now, now I am putting you on the spot, and and I don't I don't know I, I just know that this is this is yours, so I assume that you're you're reasonably involved in the process. But there's issues with our new code. Uh, our old code is many 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 years old. I, have they done the research to see if there's issues with our old code? I, I'm gonna actually re ask Scott that question, or he's nodding his head. Uh, are there issues with the old with code? The, developer. the existing code. The existing code. We've gone through it yet. Can, can he speak to Please. that? Please. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I was just picking on you. That's right. Well, can, I, just, can I make a comment about the two-year deal? Being, I, I only had like two or three meetings in the advisory committee. And just so people know in this room, they started the process, and then it got delayed an entire year mm -hmm. because, you know, you lost a planner. Aldo came on, doing a great job. Uh, then it started up again. And so there was a lot of, you know, the same people weren't involved. I'm not an expert trying to read through design review. You know, I caught that 400 foot because everyone else is. Like hmm. she's saying, you know, it's one and a half football fields. So, I mean, th those are the things that stick out, people that aren't experts. But these, I, this guy behind me knows he's an engineer, and they just now are, are reviewing it. I, and even though I, I was picking on you having you come back up here, I, I have seen the contributions that you made to the group, and I, I know that you were very involved. So I don't want, I don't want it to come across like I'm saying, well, you didn't do anything. You had two years to do something, and you haven't done anything. And I, that's not the case. I just Thanks. want it. So, so um, I guess for the record, Scott Franklin, uh, Backland again. Uh, <laughs> But I guess to, to, uh, to acknowledge what, uh, what Dan said, there, is, there are a lot of elements in this code that are good. There are a lot of elements in this code that fix things. And when we went through the existing code, we did notice the issues with them. The issues that were applicable to the specific project that my client's looking at were all solvable issues. They were obvious conflicts with different small elements of the code, and, and we were able to work through those. None of those were the issues that we're talking about in the new code. Okay, so mm -hmm. the the development as as it's being looked at right now under the old code, 
absolutely could move forward with maybe a few small issues, but nothing significant. Whereas the new the new code creates some significant issues. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, with with what we've seen, uh, with what we've looked through so far, I haven't done. Uh, uh, a precise code analysis on every item, which is what we do when we go through a land use application. There's a question earlier, are, are there any land use applications submitted on this on this particular project? No, there isn't. Uh, we're going through the site planning process now, and as we prepare our land use application, that's when we go through and, and make sure that we've dotted every I and crossed every T. So during that process, is there something that could come up that could be addressed with a minor variance or adjustment or something like that? That's possible. It may not be necessary. Okay, so thank you. It's not to the extent that we're seeing in this current code. Thank you. I, I, have, a, I have a suggestion. You need to recognize uh, Dennis when you come to the lectern now. What's that? If you're going to recognize Dennis Larantazzo, he needs to come up here. And Okay, not Dennis. from the audience. Dennis, Dennis come on up to the microphone. Public comment has yeah. is been over, and we're going to we'll be here till midnight if we keep this up. So maybe we should, you know, get. All right, I invited him up. So go ahead. I mean, yeah, Mike, please I keep it brief. So my, my comment will be you really quick. And in reference to what you mentioned about this last two-year process and everybody that was involved in the decision, one of the things that is a common mistake. I, I call it a mistake, but it just the condition is the retailers and the real estate folks from the from the major retailers that come into these communities they rarely ever participate in the decision to how they may be impacted to, to in a development so a lot of people had you, you're talking about people that had a chance to look at and comment and, and that's great but those people aren't really experts in design and orientation especially with respect to retail because I can tell you if a grocery store uh, real estate person or uh, one of those that were in there, they would have been able to comment towards, hey, in this size community, with this demographic, with this population, we have to have a store that looks like this or we can't be there. And that would have been helpful information. I know that you know a lot of work was done, granted a lot of hard work over more than two years. It's been, what, several 20 years or whatever it happens to be. But that component is always missing in, in every community. And that makes it, you know, and I think that's something that's important to recognize. All right, thank you. Council, I, I'm sorry, I kind of jumped off. A, <coughs> Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> the, despite the application of there's a problem with the code, the entire code, I actually disagree with that. I think this is a good document. <coughs> um, it cleans up a multitude of problems that we have with the code um, from a functional standpoint to a compliance standpoint. However, what we're talking about with building orientation and drive up uses is not necessarily that kind of a function of the code. It's a design issue. Okay, we're talking about design issues and you could delay the, the adoption of the code. I, I think Stacy likes Malala, but she probably doesn't want to keep coming back here. Um, sorry, I don't mean to speak for you, but that's probably the case. You could, there's a number of things you could do since this is a legislative document, okay? You can delay the, you know, the, the you could have first reading tonight and not fully adopt it until whatever you decide <coughs> to do. You can, you know, make your statements on what kinds of things you want to come back with. However, the problem is, is that the two areas, or one of the two areas at least, that probably is going to take a little bit of time with is building orientation. And if you haven't really looked at what it says in there, it's probably going to be difficult to make a decision on how to amend that. So one suggestion I had for you to consider tonight is if you like the balance of the code, you could, you could adopt it and say, but we're going to hold off on section 17-2.3.050, which has to do with drive-throughs. That's that one section there. You could you could uh, delay adoption of chapter 17-3.2, which is orientation. You could exclude those or hold those in abeyance until you get more information on it. That's one way you can go forward. <coughs> um, and then we have done no zone changes 
at least in the last four years and probably in the last 15. So I don't know how these zones keep changing in town, but we don't have anything to do with it. Um, there's a zone monster that's doing that, but we're not responsible. Um, anyway, I think you need to think about how you want to do that because there's some other things at, at play here, but it does need to be right. It needs to be the way you want it to be. And, and that's important. And, um, you know, so if we can, you know, just, you know, with respect to what Mr. Taylor said, you know, I've read the code. I know what's in it. And I know that the current code does not work. It hadn't worked for 15 years. Well, I won't disagree with that. Okay. So it's a good document. The state of Oregon and uh, Stacy Goldstein and the folks that worked on it did a fabulous job. Yes. And I think we need to acknowledge that. And um, but I, but that's one option you do have. Good because those things you know need to be amended. And uh, okay. I mean I, I know it hasn't worked in 15 years. I don't want to go down 15 years from now and say, gee, you know, right. we should have amended that. But but don't throw the whole code out for no no two no sections no the code don't work for commercial development. Can can we get it amended in? A month? Councillor Palumbo. Hmm. Oh. Well, I think we're trying to wrap, wrap up here. So um, I won't go, I won't reiterate what a lot of other people have said. So um, I, I guess I was just thinking that we could um, approve it and then start amending it immediately. Council President? Um, well, I want to commend the staff and committee and volunteers who participated in all this work because it I, I did read through the entire code and um, I think it's really a stand-up document. So thank you for that. Um, the same things that stood out to several people here about the parking, the drive-through situation, the orientation of buildings all jumped out at me as well. And um, I would say that I like the idea of perhaps helping to move some of this code along because for people who maybe don't have protection I, i'm not sure where the lady went that has the there you are back um you know providing some protection if her house burns down now that she's now has a, a way to deal with that and not lose you know all of her investment um but i do i am very concerned about having this blanket statement about how far drive-throughs have to be um, I, like Councillor Borth, went online and spent some time today looking at other communities and what they do. And, you know, really it's an assessment of each type of business and the type of impact that they bring in a drive through situation. Um, a bank is not going to have the same as a hamburger restaurant as a dry cleaner or, a, say, a drugstore. So I think you've got to wrap a little kind of common sense around the queuing of traffic into those spaces and what that looks like. Um, as opposed to saying you have to be 400 feet apart. So um, I would love to see some more work done in maybe looking at queuing or maybe setting some standards there to make it more flexible, um, but give clear guidelines to developers or retail businesses that want to come in with a drive through. Um, I agree that the parking situation with multifamily in particular, we live in a rural community. As um, Keith said, we don't have access to a lot of transportation modes. People drive. We live out here, we drive to Portland, we drive a lot of different places. Um, you may have a single mom with some kids, but you also may have a family of four with two teenage drivers in the home in an apartment building. Um, and so if you only have one space designated to that building, I think you're gonna create a lot of challenges. Um, and orientation, I spoke to Dan today, poor Dan, I uh, read this and then I called him and I bugged him for I don't know, hour and a half, hour and a half with a lot of questions, but but the orientation, you know, I've seen construction that comes straight up to the sidewalks and right up to the right of way, and when that happens, if you have future growth and you want to expand your roads or do anything else, you're stuck. You really can't go beyond where that building is, um, and that creates a lot of challenges. And I agree with Keith. And the downtown core, when you've got buildings, you know, and your parking is is street parking that's different than say out in c2 where you're going to be in a bigger commercial shopping center so i share all these concerns i do want to see some things move forward but i i want to do it really thoughtfully and not make a mistake of adopting something 
um, without fixing some of these these things in here. I think they have some room for improvement. I, has everybody had the opportunity to speak so yeah. far? Councilor Board? Um, so just to give some perspective, um, I've been doing this on and off for 10 years, and whenever there's uh, something that has to do with the code, um, business owners come out the last minute and show a bunch of concerns. And I just want to thank Mr. Avison for being part of the, the process from an early stage. That's really helpful. I look at things, I think that, you know, I, I think we should kind of move a little bit from the from looking at the business part of this to maybe a bigger part of this to me is this is being a citizen and being a customer as opposed to being just like a someone that wants to develop something because most of us are citizens and residents we're not we don't we don't mostly have businesses here and I'm not saying that's not important it is but I think we need to refocus on the citizens and the, the, the people that have houses here. And in doing that, you know, I'm, I'm more concerned with like the lot coverage and setbacks and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask um, the consultant, um, Ms. Goldstein, um, the lot coverage, um, and I can give you a page and a, and a um, or not um, was that part of the model code or was that something that was altered in the process good question that was altered as part of the process and we brought in an urban designer to do some case studies uh, using that data to make sure that it does in fact pencil out and work uh, for t today's uh, development. So those numbers were not just arbitrarily selected. Right. They were actually tested to make sure that they worked. And I'm assuming like the lot coverage, you know, I'm looking at single family, like depending on the, the zones, like 40%, 50%. That's, that's way better in my opinion uh, than what we have currently. Correct. And so that's awesome. The other thing is um, page 67, the setbacks, uh, it's 2 41. That's like a graduated scale, it's like a tiered scale, like, like the parking. Um, is that part of the model code or was that altered by the Planning Commission in this process? Can you repeat that reference, please? So I can. So it's page. 2-41 or page 67 on the agenda. And it's the it's table 17-2.2.040. Yeah, it's um lot development standard for residential zones. It's setbacks. Okay. Those were also fine-tuned based on looking at the other components, the lot coverage, density requirements, all those things that come into play to make sure that it actually works. Right, so that's another scaled <clears throat> thing that I saw that I thought was really good. Um, the other thing I want to kind of refocus on is I wanted to ask staff, um, City Manager Huff, Public Works Director Fisher, and the uh, Community Planner Rodriguez, um, is this code an improvement and do you recommend passing this code? Go ahead, you guys. I'll let you um, finish up. I'll let you go first. <laughs> um, I definitely w would recommend it. Um, you know, if I would have started my first day and Dan would have plopped this on my lap instead of our current code, <laughs> I think I would have, a, you know, a lot less nights. You'd have more hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going, uh, you know, going back in my head, you know what you know what what should we do for even you know, land use versus site, you know site design type one public notices it is a little bit spent a lot of time trying to figure it out and you know looking at Tables. and for me that's one of the most important part is just 
how easy it is to work with and how easy it is to communicate with residents because I you know I work in the front you know in the, on the over the counter and I have you know residents come in and ask me um, certain parts of this of our current code and it's kind of tough to sometimes for them to understand it and, and explain it in layman's terms so this one helps a lot so I, def I would rec recommend this code thank you Mr. City Fish. Hall remodel we strategically put Aldo right up at the front <laughs> um, I like this code compared to the older code I think we worked through um, a lot of the issues surrounding public infrastructure public facilities um, Aldo deals predominantly with everything on private property I deal with roadways and infrastructure um, this code is much more cleaned up than the other code um, one of the items that we were talking about the drive up drive through uses um, and facilities the way I read this code is the drive up and the drive through <laughs> facilities are related to public roadways so you're trying to limit the number of in and out accesses along the roadway so you don't have driveway 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 especially when you have high volume uh, for uh, drive uh, drive through uses um, just while they were talking I read the purpose and I read the portion in the C2 district zone and the handout that they supplied all of the drive through uses are internal to the development mm -hmm. so that's perfect for me because I don't have a whole bunch of curb cuts on the roadway mm -hmm. so the way I read this code is is that these two developments would comply with this code could we add something in here that says this is in regards to public streets so that they're not thinking well I can't have an internal um, drive-through within 400 feet of another internal drive-through maybe that's where some of the confusion is taking place I'm not going to talk about building orientation it's a private property development planning function I only care about what's happening on the roadway and the infrastructure so from that point of view um, I think it's a good code yeah, Gerald one thing I was thinking about which I was trying not to take up time was if they could add a phrase where it says except when within the confines of a shopping center so that it would be not cutting into the road but or, or specify that this is this is specific to the roadway is, am I interpreting that right? So you're talking Casey? about I, You know, I think... I'm talking about, I'm talking about shop, uh, drive I mean that, every Are we talking about the purpose statement or are we talking about the actual code? The, no, the purpose statement, just the way I interpret this, the drive up and drive through uses and facilities, um, and I'm not going to read the whole purpose statement, but if we, mm -hmm. if we do a minor tweak to this to just state that this, this has to do with movement conflicts and to provide uh, for pedestrian comfort and safety mm -hmm. on public roadways um, if the intent of it is to Joe limit just he's got to swap the okay. tape oh. <laughs> council can I have a motion to take a five-minute break please take a motion to take a five-minute break second, second. <laughs> all those in favor uh, aye. Aye. all those You're opposed all not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. I didn't see him back there. It's like Leota telling him to quit reading. I'm telling you. I got another like report. Yeah. I said that, that was like Leota telling him to stop reading. I think they hit all up to internal sites. Is that the way that you think it's specifically called out? Well, you know, I'll okay. just read the sheets. So, <laughs> the bad I, I know. I was bad. I, I, I know. Well, yeah. So I mean, it's more of a planning. As long as it, as long as we're limiting access, set that down. And I think even right in, right out. And right out. And now, for me, yeah, over there. The crux of it is right you don't want to. Oh, right there. You want me? Is that too high? Well, we had a discussion about it. I did make that Sorry. Yeah, there's a bunch of <laughs> 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 So, um, so 
you know, it's it is hard. Hard. the first thing kind of we're just it talking about public roadways. Oh, I'm glad you're and on then, it, then it's fine the way, the way it is, and and this I think we all need to form a It's not, and it's an internal document or internal planning. Then that that's that she'll have to revisit. As long as you know, as long as applies. Who do you ask to do something to I people that are already yes. doing things? Because I think that is, the, you're right, that's the cross condition. Yeah, because if they're providing the pedestrian connections, they're properly marketing them. Yep. Right, I mean, if they develop the, this internal, you know, the. If you've got internal pedestrian connections, oh, this was code not more than one thing. Then and it should be. And now the code requires internal oh, pedestrian right. connectivity. Uh, so if they're providing internal connectivity, cover what night? Cover the microphone. As long as we're, you know, if this is designed such that there are you are being recorded and there's no wonky pedestrians. I think it can I think it I'm sure it is. Yeah. 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 I'm struggling with addressing their preliminary design event like this. Well, and, and what I'm what I'm trying to say is, is you can bring me fifty thousand different yeah. ones. Yeah, they're all laid out this way. As long as they do their internal designs for pedestrian connectivity between the buildings mm -hmm. and the street, yeah. and as long as the internal traffic pattern. It uh, uh, facilitates the drive through so that it's not happening in the right away. And I look at it as compliant with the code. So Probably. I, I'm not saying yeah. anything that they're proposing that they would not be able to do other than maybe the building orientation. You know, I don't, I don't, I guess, you know, leaving the planner, you know, I'm thinking about other communities where they have the building orientation. Hi, Bill. I'm Keith Swigert. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody did. Oh, yeah. But they, oh, yeah. they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but he, what? These guys want to be up front. How are you? They want Good. So, does no. I've been so busy. It's going to be there to As long as they're not jamming up my road. And, and they provide protections internally. If people are running over people in there, that's not a problem. Oh, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> that, that Ready? <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> that, that means they're not maintaining what was approved. Well, and the other thing, too, is, you know, the staff is going to ensure that when they come through with a proposal, that I think we're good. Yeah, yeah, really the new code is everybody else is ready. Very strict requirements right, for pedestrian and connectivity. And, I've never and if he says like that I can't go from this building to this building because you need to get it from building to building, then that's a condition you should. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to remerge your parking or whatever, that's your problem. You should read the code because it's very clear. If I can't come from the street, and shop here, shop here, shop here. Do that. That's yeah. That's yeah. 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 How is that? Right? I mean, I don't know, because I'm, I mean, I, I, did Sheldon move you know, I, I knew it was Sheldon. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Well, I was still the other place. He was really good. Uh, uh, the other place is still doing okay. I think what they did was uh, say, uh, okay. he changed it a little bit. Can I ask Stacey so a couple questions? They give you a yeah. card, so you have, like, yeah. 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 access. Does that make sense? Whoa. So if you want to go at 3 o'clock in the morning, you yeah. swipe your card and go. Huh? Yeah, and, uh, but it's unmanned until like yes, so it's 8 a.m. or 9. And the 50% setback? Uh, 
please. I, I very car centric. I wanted to ask yes. them. So we're trying to move away. Why can't away. we just move you know, away? I mean, they could walk. just move those retail Whenever properties I'm here, this way. And it's uh, 50%, right? Just walk just walk people walk by. Yeah, so I don't think I mean, I got mine off. It, it's like, and you can shop in Sanford. You can sit in shopping center. They're all back and park at the front. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's huge. This is downtown before the buildings are there. <laughs> okay. I don't foresee us having that's a fire. That's just the building portion. Yeah. We had all the be rest there for a long time. So it's, it's Unless really somebody big. buys your door out, and I don't see that happening. So but, uh, this fine so downtown, I want to see the is devoted to production stores. Um, these storefronts like they want in over the 1900. Hey Jimmy, codes on much. The, 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 this one we're doing, looking at. Everybody I know. Is there a separate spot for it, or is it just part of the council? council it's, agenda? it's in the code, uh, replacement project on planning. Definitely. You know, one thing yeah. we didn't talk about in parking. Yeah. So if you go to nobody the, uh, so if you go to the main right. web page, then go into the departments to planning. Where okay. <laughs> One per space. And yeah. So departments and planning, because he's in the planning department, and then I think well, the, right the one my son lives in. Yeah, there's a, there's a little tab for code replacement or code revision uh, project. Uh, Click on that. Boom. For every commercial project, you give you a copy. I have an extra copy. That's where you got to be. Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ready? Well, they had that too, but it, yeah, he's it's ready. not. Oh, online? Yeah. Okay. Basically, it fills up the other. The other thing okay. yeah. yeah. and No, I, I, I got two copies. We got copies. Yeah. People that live there yeah. are parking in the guest room. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't, you remember our Art Link letter, right? With the kids? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was fun. Yeah. Right. Yes, it was. <laughs> Waiting on this. Waiting on the council president. Waiting on the council president. You know, if if I leave, she's in charge, right? So then she has to run it. Yeah. It sounds like you might be the right person. No. Oh, three to six What that looks like. Yeah. Absolutely. Council, we need a motion to reopen the meeting. Take a motion, we reopen the meeting. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? None? Okay, Gerald, I cut you off. Do you need to oh, continue yeah. with it or? I, I just had a discussion. My interpretation, I believe, is right. Could we tweak this language? Yeah, no. I think that, that the uses or the internal uses um, for um, that pattern to happen inside the development <laughs> where you want it to happen as long as they're pro providing pedestrian connectivity which is in the old code and the new code and they're not trying to put a bunch of curb cuts in the roadway I think that any version of these complies with the with the old and new code um, but if you want to pull this out so we can dress up the language then that's that's something that we can do to kind of wrap that up and make it a little clearer you speaking about the drive-throughs? The drive-throughs. Yeah. yeah. 17-3.2.060. It's a very small section. And you had asked all three of them. Do you want yeah. Dan to answer as well? So I think I know his answer, but if you want to <laughs> just say it for the record, we don't really care I, what Dan says. I, <laughs> I think when you when you talked about taking a look at the code as as residences or other, you know folks that live here, work here, um, and function in this town, that part of the code actually functions very well. Um, it's, uh, and Aldo, Aldo said, you know, if I'd have handed him this code instead of the current one, he'd probably be a lot better off today. But, uh, so in that sense, it's actually a phenomenal improvement from what we have. So I don't want to lose that component, okay? Procedurally, it's, it's a better improvement. If you all as a governing body decide to make some design changes based on what you want to see and allow for commercial development, you know, that's that's fine. I just don't want to lose the balance of the code for that. Um, oh, no. no. As your staff, we desperately need that part of the code. And 
And so does the general public. Um, it's it's a difficult thing for the general public to use as well. And just you know, as, I, I think that 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 affects more people than than the commercial part. And and again, I I think the commercial part's important, but I think this other part is uh, will affect more people. Um, and I think we're all pretty much um, hopefully. You know, the issues are the, the tiered parking, the orientation, and the drive-through, and I think, but the rest of it we're, we're um, hopefully on the same page on. So, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't know if you have a If, if I can throw out, throw out a recommendation, um, you know, as, as was mentioned, there are many different ways that we can handle this. Um, I, listening to our discussion, uh, the information that we've had, I'll make a suggestion. If council's interested, you guys can take action on it. Uh, I would suggest that we have a first reading tonight by title only uh, with the amendment to the, the parking for uh, the multifamily, um, excuse me, for duplexes first and foremost. Presently, it's two per duplex. I'd like to see that change to three. And then on multifamily residential, instead of one, an actual tier. Our current code has one for one bedroom, uh, 1.5 for two bedroom, and two for three bedroom or more. I'd like to see that increase because our present standard doesn't provide enough parking for the, the residents that are there. Uh, I'd like to see that increase to 1.5 for one bedroom, two for two bedroom, and 2.5 for three bedroom or more. Uh, and then in addition to the amendment to go ahead and hold back uh, section 17 dash 2.3.050, which is the drive up portion, and 17 3.2, .2, which is the orientation. Just hold those completely back from it. We can have that conversation at a separate time and go ahead and move the rest of it forward. I agree. So be it. So I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. So the first reading by title only. Uh, I need the title. Ordinance. It's right here. Perfect. Thank you. An ordinance replacing the Malala Development Code. Boy, that was difficult. All right. Ordinance number 2017-08. All right. So we have the first. First. You got it. Yes. Right. We did. Okay. We have the first reading tonight. Amended the one. The other two items were held back. That'll come back. This will come back for a second reading. At our at our next meeting, we can we can handle it how we would like to that. Okay. Yes. What are we going to do in the meantime about coming up with how we're going to change the amendments? The amendments, the things that were held out. We have. I have. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> we have we we have some discussions to have with with the consultant mm -hmm. and the state on where we go from here on that component. And uh, we will possibly at your next meeting, there's, um, sorry, I'm looking at my glasses and I can't see you. Um, there, there's a couple of options that we have at that point. Um, but we'll give you probably a report on what we need to do at your next meeting. It may need to go back to the Planning Commission. It may not. So but we may need to work on that. That was an idea we had tonight. So. Um, where we go from here, I don't have a great theory for you. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I understand why it needs to go back to the consultant. I'm not either. They've given us a document. Yeah. We know the changes we want to make. Now, if they want to type it up or put it into the document. Well, what I mean by yeah. that is we have, a, we have a grant process that we need to wrap up. Okay. So we really do need to look at that and see where we are. Part of that grant process was the city adopting the code. Okay, I'm with you now then. Okay. Okay. So we need to talk with them about where we go from here on that. If what you did tonight gets us to the end of the project or if we need to wait a little bit. And so got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other question or, or concerns? All right. The next item that we have is under general business, ordinance 2017-09, uh, 
amending section 1.02.240 of the Malala Municipal Code related to the authorization of expenditures. Mm -hmm. And we've, I guess I can speak to that one. Mm -hmm. um, council had actually requested that we have some changes to the code come back uh, regarding the spending authorities. So this would change the department heads from 1,000 to 5,000 and change the city manager spending authority to 100,000. Uh, this is for budgeted items, mm -hmm. items that go through the public process are approved as part of the budget. It's not just allowing them to write a blank check for, for that amount. Uh, we also have in place to receive the warrant, warrant registers or check registry as we actually did receive. That was good info, thank you. Um, so, questions or concerns about that? This is something that we, we had requested. Yeah, no. All right. Uh, if there's interest, we need a motion for a first reading by title only ordinance 2017-09. So be it. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And that's ordinance 2017-09 amending section 1.02. Dot two four zero of the Malala Municipal Code related to the authorization of expenditures. Being that it was unanimous, we can go ahead and continue on and have a second reading by title only. Make a motion to have a second reading by total, title only second. ordinance 2017-09. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Ordinance 2017-09 amending section 1.02.240 of the Malala Municipal Code related to the authorization of expenditures. And if there's interest, we can actually And make a motion to adopt. approve ordinance 2017-09. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 2017-09. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. So be it. Onward to reports and announcements. Aldo, I, unless do you do have you anything for us this evening. I, I do not. Okay, all right. I'm going to head right. take it to the mayor. Thank you. Council. I do not. Gerald? Uh, I don't have anything other than I'll pass around the monthly update on uh, public and private projects for your enjoying reading. Thank you. Four, five, six. Shani? Yep. <clears throat> um, the only thing I have is an update on utilities. So our deadline was September 1st, and we've received uh, about two-thirds. So we've done an extension to October 15th. We sent a notice out in the, in the billing that will go out on the 1st. And within a couple weeks, we'll send out a letter to the specific final people that have not done it. And we may have to um, turn their water off in order to get them to comply. Can we put something in the newspaper first? Reach out mm -hmm. to do some sort of... We can. So we I, keep I mean, I know, that, to I know what we've done to do the outreach, but... We want to reach out as much as we can, so... Thank you. Dan? That was it? I think so. Did you have anything else nope. for us? No. Then. <laughs> um, so tomorrow and Friday and Saturday, Elise, Cindy, who's not there, Glenn and Elizabeth and I will be at League of Oregon Cities. Hmm. You're all missing it. Um, <laughs> That's one Three thing. Three days of fun. <laughs> if I wanted to bring up, so we've got everybody scheduled for the goal setting uh, at the end of October, first, first of November there. Um, I got one no on coming in on Halloween. And that was from the person who isn't here for a communication discussion with the consultant that's coming in to do the customer service training. Remember that email I sent out? Yes. Are you all avoiding me I, because it's Halloween and yeah. you don't want to come in and go to work? I got, I got hung in effigy at City Hall for that. Just letting you know that. Are, Are you, you bringing asking candy? Us for something or? <laughs> we can bring candy. If you, can if you need me here, I'll, you can I'll come in your costume. <laughs> okay. If you need me here, I'll be here. Hmm. 
Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to have dinner. I, I can attend. Well, I think if one out of seven can't make it, that's unfortunate. Well, that's the only one I heard back from. Was I, can, one of <laughs> I can ignore my wife's uh, retirement party. So. My oh, wife had one. I'd wow. probably be here too. Wow. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hey. She doesn't want one anyway, so. <laughs> Perfect. If you want us here, how about you let us know? Yeah. We'll be here. Okay. I'll send yeah, we're dedicated. <laughs> okay. Aren't we? So if anybody wonders where <laughs> the, your council will be on Halloween, it sounds like we will be here. Well, Are we going to close the street down again this year? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Might I think soon. I think we yeah, should. I think we should. I, we are. Some poetic heard irony heard there. Yes. I think we should, Terry. Heard boo. No yeah, heard kind of boo kind of about it. Mm. Okay. It's yeah, they, we are. They, All right. Uh, uh, I don't know if anybody filled out in that. In they have. Event permit. Wasn't, Do you want me to fill one out? <coughs> uh, whoever, I can fill one out. It's just whoever's organizing it should really get online and get an event yeah, permit a, and fill it out and turn it in so that we can process it quickly for them. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Volunteer. All right. So the street's going to be shut down. For Halloween, sure. In the evening, yeah, awesome. It is. Sounds Excellent. good. So we can hold yes. our meeting out there. Yeah, we can just go right out in the street and watch all the little ghouls and goblins run by. We better take. Yeah, you definitely better have candy if we have our meeting outside. <laughs> just let us know what time. Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. That's all I had for tonight. All right, Councillor Palumbo. Nothing tonight. Councillor no. Swigert. Councillor Borth. Uh, just to expand on what uh, City Manager Huff said, if those of us that are going to the League of Oregon Cities, we could maybe meet at lunch on tomorrow and discuss who's going to what and kind of divide and conquer. That way we could cover as many bases as we could. That'd be awesome. Good plan. Looking forward to it. Thank you. You're going to the, the mayor's, right? Councillor, anything? Uh, just to report that Councillor Swigert and I attended um, a, a, a county meeting on housing affordability. And if you'll note, they've changed the name of that from affordable housing to housing affordability because it is two different things. And uh, it was, it was uh, had a lot of good ideas. really interesting. Uh, the county in, is moving forward and cities will be moving forward and uh, Councillor Klein has mentioned the countywide uh, study that's going to be done and that was mentioned that day again. We have a lot of people struggling to have housing. People are spending 60% of their income on housing and, and that makes it impossible for them to live with any kind of quality of life and so we hope to be part of changing that. I think that so we'll revisit the code, Aldo. Yeah. <laughs> when, when we, when we get the proposal back, it'll actually come before council for us to decide whether or not to participate in the the housing needs assessment. Um, but that is in process. To get information. There's supposed to be some discussion about SDCs. It sounds like in our next C4 meeting. But I may have to wear two hats that night. You can sit at the table. I, uh, no, you'll have to sit at the table because I may have to actually be a staff member that night. <laughs> and you want to tell about the vision? Yeah. Yeah, you done? I'm done. You okay. Councillor? Right. Um, so we started phase two of the visioning process for um, our Malala area project, and uh, we're really excited. The surveys are available online for people who haven't participated already. We'd love for you to get online and take the surveys. We've got them in English and Spanish. Um, we have a group of vision, we're going to call them our vision champions, um, who have volunteered to help us deploy surveys in a lot of creative ways, um, reach out to their networks, print surveys, maybe going out with Meals on Wheels, um, going to the schools, having students fill out surveys, and just put a lot of creative thinking into how to get as much participation as possible and again looking at our service area if I'm remembering correctly we may have you know 9,000 people in city limits but we have a service area of somewhere in the neighborhood of what 46,000 people oh um, those are people who come and use our service spend time in our city we want to hear from as many people as possible so um, 
stay tuned for that. We're going to have community meetings and we're going to go to businesses, take it on the road. Um, and we just want as many people to participate, participate as possible so you know we can develop a vision for this community, um, some value statements, and an action plan moving forward on getting some things done and putting some res resources behind some of these ideas. So, thank you. That's it. I like the idea of the children. Yeah. Yeah. Filling out surveys. Yeah. We want to hear from a broad range of people for sure. Good. Definitely. Um, we had a open house. I believe it was this last Wednesday uh, regarding a transportation or a street utility fee transportation utility fee street maintenance utility fee street maintenance <laughs> boy you had to throw all of the words in there you could couldn't you make sure um, so so we actually had about 30 people that showed up to participate in the discussions had some good discussion about it I hope that uh, we will actually continue the outreach I think we got some really good feedback but getting that feedback out to the community and looking at potentially having another city hall uh, fairly soon to cover the same topic so that when it is time for us to take action, we can do so confidently. Um, I don't have anything else this evening. If council's ready to go home, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Mm I just want to say one thing. Can I say thank you to our public works director for this comprehensive yeah. list? Will it be included in our online packet so people can read this? Uh, yeah, at a certain point we probably will. And with um, Andy coming on board, uh, once he actually gets his feet underneath him out there, we will add a section on to the end of it that um, every other month will be an update on the work that the maintenance division has done, including the parks. And the other months are going to be the water treatment plant and wastewater treatment plant okay. and the work that they've done because they do a lot of maintenance and equipment replacement and stuff out there that is above and beyond the capital projects and the private development. So we'll kind of highlight those every other month too once he kind of figures out where they're going to go. And I'd like to ask to receive that by email. That gets forwarded to the chamber who distributes to their 170 members. Mm -hmm. So. The other thing on that note is we did things just a hair differently with how we sent you the agenda. Any thoughts on that in addition to that? You know, like we didn't make it so you got the entire thing because it was 260. I got the entire thing. We got the link to the entire you thing. The link. Well, we, sure. we got the link. We got the certain. Have, you didn't have to find, you yeah. didn't have to. Didn't have to open it. You didn't have to open it if you didn't want to. <laughs> there was a couple of other things. There's a letter from uh, Commissioner Bernard in there, and that whole pile of stuff we sent you. So mm -hmm. we kind of gave you a smorgasbord rather than mm -hmm. just dump the whole thing. And that that was really what I was. If it's not 260 pages, I'd like to see one email. But breaking it up when you've got major okay. sections, I think, is helpful. So, I, having the the separate pieces like the letters I think called those out within the right. email yeah. so I, oftentimes when it you get 50 pages something that could be a single page can get lost and so mm -hmm. okay yeah all right uh, anybody want to call the question or should we just go ahead and vote all the question all those in favor Aye. 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 all those opposed no thank you guess have a good evening thank, thank you. you if you would oh. like to sign your name yours? away yeah. no I think all right. so